Satan. I offer my most loving pronouns to the sacred lotus feet of our dear Lord, Sri Bhagavan Satya Sai Baba. Dear elders, brothers and sisters, distinguished guests, I am going to cover today a very important topic. I would like to assume that you are here, that you came this weekend to this event because you want to have more spirituality in your life that you want to become a more spiritual person. I hope you do. I, I hope you came because of that. Not just to have a nice vacation somewhere else, kind of cheap, not very expensive as compared to other places. I hope it is not that. I hope you are here because you wanted to learn some things, because you wanted to be inspired because you wanted to be motivated, moved forward in your spiritual life. And I know you will. It only takes a decision. Make a decision today. Make a decision that your life from now on in the future is going to be different that something will be changed, that there will be some transformation, as I was saying yesterday. Knowing that, and hoping that you will take my words very seriously, I'm going to give you the tools today. I am going to tell you the how you can move your forward and be more of a spiritual person. So what I'm going to cover today, I'm going to talk about what is spirituality. What is spirituality? Probably you have some ideas about what spirituality is. I will give you Swami's definition in his own words, what spirituality is. But not only that, I am also going to tell you what spirituality is not. Some misconceptions, some misinterpretations of what some people think spirituality is, but is not. Then, the most important part, the third one of this presentation. And when I get to that point, I want you to take notes, either in paper or mentally. Because this is when I am going to tell you the things that you need to do to become a more of a spiritual person in your daily life. And finally, what I am going to do towards the end of this presentation, I am going to tell you what are the wonderful benefits, what are all the wonderful words that people can get when you get more spiritual. It's fantastic. It's great. Being a spiritual is fantastic. Believe me. The one who is telling you this, it is someone who didn't used to be spiritual at all. You remember what I told you yesterday in my story. I had everything that people can wish for in the material world, and yet I was so unhappy, so miserable because I didn't have God in my heart. Because I was not a spiritual man. So I know what it is to be like, non-spiritual, not having God in your heart, and being a spiritual, having God in your life. I am saying again, it is fantastic. 
It is a transformation that I wish for every one of you. That is my sincere desire. So let me start by going into what do you think is a spirituality? Think about it. In your own mind, in your own definitions, what is a spirituality? What do you think it is a spirituality? I hope you're right. Whatever you thought, if you thought something, did you think about something? I hope you did. If you thought about something, I hope you're right. I will tell you what Swami says is spirituality. Spirituality does not mean performance of ritual worship or doing bhajans. Spirituality calls for the removal of the animal traits in man. That is a spirituality. The removal of the animal traits in man. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. How to remove those animal traits that we all have. That's, that's the truth. We all have some animal tendencies, but we need to remove them. So, if we understand that spirituality is not going to the puja room and doing some pujas, that spirit, real spirituality is not singing bhajans, is not chanting slokas, all of that is good. By no means, I'm not trying to put that down. That is good, and that is important. But only doing that, and just doing that, and nothing else, and not living a life when we're trying to remove our animal tendencies, just doing that is not going to work. It's not going to be enough. It's worthless. Going to the puja room and having hate for a brother or sister is worthless. Doing some bhajans, doing some shlokas, and having a lot of anger, animosity about other people, being selfish and not caring about anybody, being selfish and not doing any service for anybody, it's worthless. Whatever you are doing in your puja room, it doesn't amount to anything. What is important is to do that along with making the effort every day, every minute of your life, to remove those animal tendencies Greed, jealousy, envy, anger, all of those. They have to come out. They have to go. They have to leave you. You don't need to have that. Those are animal tendencies. We are not animals. In a way we are, but we are not animals to have those tendencies. We need to overcome those things, Swami says. We need to take them out of our, our life. So, having defined what a spirituality is, Basically, as I said, removing our animal tendencies, I'm going to go into one of the misconceptions, one of the misunderstandings that people have sometimes about spirituality. I have one, two, three. Three. Three misconceptions, three misunderstandings that people believe this is a spirituality. Some people believe that spirituality encourages people to escape the worldly responsibilities. That is totally false. Actually, spiritual people are the ones who are the most responsible individuals in this world. You don't need to avoid that. Like, oh, I am so spiritual, I don't care about being a good husband, a good wife, a good father, a good worker in my job. Nah, that's not important. I, I am a spiritual. No, quite by the contrary. We don't avoid our responsibilities in the world. Actually, we do the best we can. Spiritual people do the best as spouses, as parents, as sons, as employers, as employees. We do the best we can so that we avoid those uh, worldly responsibilities. 
Second misconception. Thinking that spirituality, being spiritual, calls for going away somewhere like to the forest, to the cave, where you have no contact with other human beings. You have heard Swami or you have read Swami saying so many times, to be spiritual, you don't need to go to the forest or to the cave. You don't need to do that. Actually, we need to be spiritual right where we are at this point. Wherever you are at this point, married, single, family, no family, employee, employer, rich, poor, whatever you are, wherever you are, this is exactly where you need to start becoming more spiritual. Don't go anywhere. You don't need to go anywhere. Actually, you know, it's very easy to be spiritual when there is no challenges, when there's nobody around you to challenge you. Oh, I go to the forest, I go to a cave, I go to a lonely house somewhere where nobody's around, and there I am so peaceful, so spiritual. Of course, nobody's challenging you. Nobody is making your life miserable. It is very easy to be spiritual that way. But only when we are challenged, only when we are in difficulties and troubles, we can grow up. We can grow. We grow. That's the reason why challenges are welcome. Because challenges and problems and difficulties will help us grow. So, again, we don't need, and Swami has said that so many times, we don't need to go anywhere to be spiritual. We start being spiritual right where we are. Third misconception. And I will tell you, I had this one. I believed that. I had a lot of problems with that. I thought, some people think, that to be a spiritual, you have to be poor. No money. If you are rich, you are in trouble. Because rich people can't be spiritual. That's what I used to think. That was what taught me when I was in the Christian path, in the past. And I lived with that misconception for so many years that whenever I was making some good money, having money, which I did at some point, I felt guilty. I felt guilty about it. Because I thought, I mean, you know, if I have this money and I am rich somehow, I cannot be a spiritual. And for me, it is more important to be spiritual. So how can I reconcile being spiritual and having money? There is no problems. The problems we are creating, we are invented problems where there is no problems. Actually, you know something? The richer you are, the more money you have, the more good, the more service, the more help you can provide to the world. So money is not an evil thing to have. Problem is two things. When you have money, first problem, don't become attached to it. Attachment to money generates greed. And greed generates the desire to be always looking for more and more and more and more. And there is never an end to it. And we know people like that. They have tons of money. And yet, they never seem to be satisfied with what they have, which is a lot. They always want more and more and more, and greed is pushing them to want more. That's a big problem. Of course, having that attitude in life is very difficult to be a spiritual. So that's one of the problems with having money. Attachments to it. Number two, having money 
it's, it, it, it is not good depending on how you use it. Depending how you use your money. You can have very little, you can have all the money in the world. If you use it in the wrong way, and what do I mean by the wrong way? I mean, if you use your money for selfish purposes, just to benefit yourself, not care about anybody else. My money is my money, and I'm going to do whatever I want with it, and I'm going to enjoy life, and I'm going to do all kinds of things, and buy all kinds of things. You remember yesterday I told you, I was buying all kinds of things. People said, well, if you want to be happy, have a nice car, have a nice expensive car. So I had to Porsche. Crazy. <laughs> and I was still very unhappy. So I kept, as you remember from yesterday, I kept buying things, hoping that it will give me more happiness. But remember, Swami has said so many times, happiness doesn't come from the things that you have in the outside. Happiness comes from the inside. Happiness comes from your God inside. Happiness comes from you. And if you can touch, get in touch, contact that God inside of you, then and only then you can experience happiness and bliss. So the second problem with money, other than attachment to it, is the way how we use it. One more misconception that we might have about being a spiritual. Please take note of this in your mind. Being super busy, very busy, doing a lot of things, so-called spiritual things, going to every spiritual group, going to every bhajan, going to read, to read in all kinds of spiritual books, singing all kinds of bhajan, all the time. Doing all of that keeps you so busy that sometimes you forget about eliminating the animal tendencies that you have. You're just singing bhajans, reading books, going to pujas, going to groups, doing this, doing that, and you don't think, you don't employ too much time, you don't employ too much effort in trying to change. Have you know people who are going to groups, maybe the groups that you go to, whatever group you go to, maybe side group, maybe other groups, people who are very busy doing all kinds of things, and yet you feel, you know, that they are making very little progress in their spiritual life because they are not working on themselves. That's important. We need to work on ourselves. We need to get rid of those, spirit, of those animal tendencies. That's the main thing in life. As I said before, doing bhajans and pujas and all of that is good. Doing services, all of that is good. But if we know, if we don't, Work on ourselves at the same time is worthless. So, let me go to the important part that I want you to really, really remember. And not only remember, write it down and remember, write it down and read it later, or think in your mind about those things that I'm going to tell you. Let's see. I'm going. It's a little bit long. I'm going to tell you about fourteen one four things that you can do 
to be more spiritual, to integrate spirituality in your daily life. I'm going to go one by one. I'm going to go slowly. I'll give you time to write if you want to write, or I will give you time to really think about it. Of course, you are not going to be able to do the 14 things that I'm going to mention here. That will be too much. I mean, if you can do them, that will be fantastic. Most people won't be able to do all of those things. Actually, Swami says, if you just do one, if you pick up one of these things that I'm going to tell you in a minute, just one, and you do it consistently, all the time, every day, for some time, spirituality will come. And many of the other 14 things, or 13 in this case, will just happen, will just come. So pick at least one. Or if you want two or three of the things that I'm going to tell you. And remember, today is going to be the last day of your life as you knew it until today. Because tomorrow is going to be the beginning of a new life for you. Because you're going to be different over time. Because you're going to do some things different. And I'm going to tell you the things that you want to do, that you need to do, that you're going to do. One by one. So you can apply it in your life. So let me begin. Number one. Detachment. Detachment. Detachment from what? What is Swami expecting us to be detached from? Detachment from all the material things in the world? Detachment from our own animal tendencies? Detachment from whatever creates bonding, slavery in our life. We need to detach. And at the same time, we need to gain more attachment to God and to our inner life, to our soul life. This is where we need to focus. We need to start not focusing so much in the outside world and focusing more in the inside world. You have read Swami. Use the mind for doing that. Use the mind. Swami has said so many times, the mind is like a key. You turn it one way, you lock it. You turn it the other way, you unlock. Mind is the same. You turn your mind to God, your life goes one way. You turn your mind to this world through the senses, your life will go in another way, totally different. So we need to turn our mind to focus our mind into godly things, into God, basically. And we do that by constantly detach from becoming too much focused into worldly things. Maybe some of you are like that. I used to be like that. I, I know I was like that. I was constantly thinking about work, 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 make money, make money, make money, buy things, buy things, buy things, and then be happy. Sure. I was miserable. So, instead of constantly thinking about your job, yes, it's good to think about a good work. It's good to think about doing a good job in your work as a mother, as an employee, as a supervisor, whatever you're doing. It's good, it's important to do a good job. Definitely. You need to think about that to a certain extent. 
but be obsessed with getting a promotion, being obsessed about trying to be the best mother and father ever in your life. No, it's very hard. You're going to make, make mistakes. We're human beings. Sometimes we're going to make mistakes in, in raising our children. That happens. But if your focus is in God, most of the time, not all the time, you need time for doing other things, but most of the time, your mind is dwelling in God, in godly things that will be the very first step that you need to take to live spiritual life. So detachment. Number two. Attitude. Attitude. If we want to have a spiritual life, we have to have a positive attitude. Yeah, that's nice. Sure, Dr. Gomez, I know that. I have known that for a long time. Having a positive attitude is great. But how do you do that? I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you how you can have a positive attitude in life. Three things you need to do to be a positive person. Number one, no regrets about the past. No regrets about the past. Sometimes people are so consumed by the wrong things that happened in the past that they are constantly regretting what happened to them. Forget the past. No regrets about the past. It's not easy, but you need to try that. You need to practice that. And how do you practice that? Focus on the present. Try to live mindfully present in the present. And I will tell you how to do that in a minute. And number three, I said, no regrets about the past. Try to live as much as you can in the present. And number three, see the future with optimism. You know these people who are looking at the future all the time, and they are always thinking very negatively, oh gosh, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to get that job, I'm not going to have good children, I'm not going this, I'm not going that. No optimism. Optimism, optimism is looking for the future with a very positive attitude. And we need to do that. Number three, after attitude, one good thing that we need to learn, that we need to do, and I hope you do, I didn't have it. I learned to have it with Carmen because Carmen is always laughing. She laughs a lot. I was a very serious, angry person before Baba. I didn't know what was laughing. I didn't have good sense of humor. So one of the things that we need to develop is good sense of humor. Laughing. We need to laugh. We need to laugh a lot. We need to smile a lot. That is good for the spiritual. Actually, actually, if I was going to tell you all the good things that happens when we laugh, we will be here until midnight and we haven't finished. Yeah, because laughing is so good for so many things mentally, spiritually, in your body. It does so many good things. One time, someone asked Swami, and it is in his books, Swami, how can we recognize a spiritual person? What do you think he said? Did he say, oh, someone who does a lot of pujas? Oh, someone who, do, who sings beautiful bhajans? Oh, someone who is doing a lot of service? He didn't say any of that. You know what he said? Because, we can recognize them, because they have a good sense of humor. 
This is exactly word by word what Swami said. Spiritual persons are having a good sense of humor. So I hope that you are not like me before Baba. I hope that you have a good sense of humor. And if you don't, try to develop it. A good sense of humor can be learned. It's something that can be learned. I'm not going to go into that. There are different ways to learn how to be more humorous. We don't have the time. But having a good sense of humor is something that anybody can learn. Believe me, if I did it, with the help of my dear wife, Carmen, anybody can do it. Because I was the most angry, serious, no sense of humor person in this world. That's me, before Baba. I, I, I am sure no one of you were like that, or is like that at this point. Then, number four. To be more spiritual, you have to have more faith. Faith is the key word here. You have to have more faith in God. Well, that sounds good. But how do we develop more faith in God? Yeah, I like to have more faith in God. But how do we do that? How can it be done? How can it be accomplished? Again, Swami has the answer for this one too. We will develop more faith in God when we learn reading or listening in the old time when there was no books and people learn by speaking, traditions, oral traditions. I teach you something, you teach that to somebody else and somebody else. Learning by any means about the lives and lilas of an avatar of God. And this is my question to you. Think about it. How often are you reading, watching videos, look it, looking at maybe the internet, and learning about Baba's life, about Baba's lilas? Do you do that? Radio Sai is there. Radio Sai has tons of information about God, about Swami. How often do you watch Radio Sai or listen to Radio Sai? I don't know. How often do you read a book showing you, teaching you about Swami's life and Lila's? If it is very little, I am going to tell you. I beg your faith is very little as well. Because you develop faith when you learn about God. Then you feel so happy, so close to this avatar, to God, any name, any form of God, that then you develop faith. And you remember this is why at the very beginning of his career as an avatar, Swami was doing a lot of lilas. That was what he called his presentation cards. Because he knew that when people see those lilas, they will have more faith. By lilas, I mean miracles, in case you don't know the, the term. And most of you do, probably. When we see the miracles of any great saint, any avatar, any messenger of God, whether it is Jesus, Buddha, Ram, Swami, when we see all of those miracles, our faith in that person will increase. So to have more faith, remember, we need to be more in contact with their life by any means. You know, we are so fortunate. We are so fortunate in this time and days 
because all of that information about, about our dear Swami is available in the internet. It's available through tons of books. It's available through CDs and DVDs. In the old times, it wasn't like that. If you were lucky that you were accepted under a teacher, he will pass that information, word of mouth, and that's it. You were not sometimes even allowed to read it. You had to memorize all of that in your memory. And then you will do the same with your disciples or your followers. And they were very, very few who had access to important spiritual information in those times. Now everything is out there. If you don't use it, it's because you are not really committed to Swami. You need to do more reading. You need to do more internet. You need to go to radio site. You need to watch more CDs, um, DVDs, I'm sorry, and listen to more CDs. Are you doing that on a daily basis? I don't know. Maybe I will tell you what has been my experience. Yeah, you can raise your hand or you can keep it down. But I will tell you what I, what I have seen in my going to different groups. Most Sai devotees don't read that much about Swami's books, Swami's teachings, Swami's life, Swami's lilas. Do you read books about Swami? I don't know, maybe a few of you. If you are normal, and by normal I mean like most other people in most other groups that I have been at, probably a lot of the people here don't do much reading. Well, Dr. Gomez, I really don't like to read. Actually, they are not in my language. Actually, my English is not that good that I can enjoy reading. That's fine. Is that the reason why you don't read more? That's fine. How about watching DVDs or listening to audio CDs? You can do that. There are millions of ways how you can lie, where you can learn the life of Baba and develop more faith. Number five. Number five thing that I want you to do to develop more spirituality. Service. Do service. Help other people. I used to be regional in my region, southeast region, number three region, low east coast in the United States. I used to be regional service coordinator. That means that I was supposed to supervise, I was in charge, I, was, I had to care about centers in the whole region doing service. One of the very first things that I decided to do, I will go to every center, and I did. I had four, two years, and then I was re-elected two more years, or re-selection two more years. I had four years to go to all the centers in my region to talk about service, to encourage them to do more service, to give them ideas about different types of services they can do. Do you know what I found? Do you know what I saw? Only about 20% of the people in each group, in each size center, will be interested in doing service. 20%! That's nothing! That is very little. Only a small group of people will come to my workshops about service. The first few times, I have to be honest, I was a little bit discouraged. Nobody's showing up. You have 25, 30 people coming to this center, and only maybe six, seven, eight people, if, if that many, will come to my presentation to learn about service and do more service. I was discouraged. After the first few presentations like that, I was wondering, I was thinking, is it worth to do this? Am I wasting my time? But you know what? 
when Swami gives you a responsibility, and I was responsible for promoting and helping service in my region, when Swami gives you any kind of duty, assignment, whether re regional service coordinator or a mom or a father or an employee or a student, whatever responsibility, duties, assignment Baba is giving you now in your life, you have to do it. And not only you have to do it, you have to do it the best you can. It's very hard to talk to eight people the best you can. I wanted to have there 30, 40, 50 people. I have six or seven. So to be inspired to talk to them the best I can was not easy at the beginning. But I did it anyway. And then I learned after some time that maybe one or two people here and there came to me, maybe later on, maybe by email, maybe in another presentation, and they told me, Dr. Gomez, what you said in that presentation where we were so few changed my life. I started doing service and it changed my life. So it doesn't matter what your assignment is, what your duty is, what Baba wants you to do. Big assignment talking to 7,000 people or a small assignment trying to take care of your family. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. The important thing to do is, number one, to do it. And number two, to do it well. And we have to develop those skills. So let me go now to number six. The, the sixth thing that you need to think of to develop more spirituality. Language. Talking. Uh, when I am supposed to finish, Rika? 10-10. Ten, ten. Okay, good. Thank you. If you see that it's 10-5, so I wrap, wrap up. Okay, number five. Excuse me, six. Language. <clears throat> if we want to be more spiritual, we need to develop a new habit of talking, speaking. Are you gossiping all the time? Do you like to gossip? Do you like to talk bad about other people? I don't know. I hope not. But if you do, scratch that out. That is something that you need to change. To be a spiritual is very difficult and incom incompatible with the way we talk if it is the wrong way. Do you remember the nine points of the code of conduct? Of course you do. If you are a side devotee, if you have been even for a few months, or if you have been here for 30 years, Baba's follower, of course you have heard, and maybe you know by heart, the nine points of the code of conduct. Let me see with a show of hands. Who can tell you? I'm not going to ask you, but just let me tell you. Let me ask you. Who remembers one by one, from number one to number nine, the nine points of the code of conduct? Who can remember and tell me that, if, if, if you do? Anybody? You do, okay? Only one person? Two people? Three people? That is still very low. Four people? That is still very low. Do you know what Swami said? If you don't know and practice the nine points of the code of conduct, you cannot be called my devotee. No. You have been calling yourself devotee of Swami, a devotee of Satya Sai Baba. He said, no, you don't even know the nine points. Never mind about practicing them. But you know, I'm not going to do this to anybody, but let me tell you what happened. One day I was in, in Prashantini Lion and we had a group, maybe 100 or 200 people, a small group. You know, Prashanti people go in thousands and thousands, so it was two or 300 people. And the leader of that group asked the same question. 
Does anybody know the nine points of the code of conduct? Tons of hands went up. He said, yay, that's great. I'm so happy you know that. Sir, can you tell me the nine points of the code of conduct? Oops. He couldn't. He was lying. And then he asked again, well, okay, let me do that again. Does anyone know the nine points of the code of conduct? <laughs> Very few hands went up. Very few. And then he said, okay, madam, can you tell me the nine points of the code of conduct? She knew. She knew. Now, do you know what, which one is the seventh point of the nine points of the code of conduct? Which one is the ninth? I'm not going to put you in, problem, in trouble, but just raise your hand, just, just for me to get an idea. Who knows which one is the number seventh? Yeah. Don't speak ill of others. So if you thought about that one, you were right. How about number eight, the next one? Especially in their absence. That would be part of that. But how about a speak softly and lovingly? That's the way Baba wants us to speak when we talk about others. Softly. <laughs> I'm laughing because lovingly was added. The way it was given at the beginning, it was just Speak softly. And you know what, we're, what some people were doing in some side groups? They were speaking softly. They were going like, if I could do something, I will kill you. <laughs> Very slowly. <laughs> Not lovingly. Slowly. They spoke slowly. So they had to add soft, slowly, and lovingly, softly and lovingly. Lovingly, lovingly is the key word here. I knew people in one of the centers, not, not in Jacksonville, one of the centers where I was before. She was such an obnoxious person, and she was always talking like that, sh -sh 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 whispering. She thought spirituality was whispering, don't raise your voice, speak very low, low volume, very slowly, and say all kind of bad things. <laughs> that will be okay. That was her understand misunderstanding. So change your language. Number seven. Actions. I want you to start paying attention when you go back home, when you go back to your life, your normal, regular life. Start paying attention to what you do from moment to moment? What are your actions? All the time. And ask yourself these questions each time. Is this action going to get me closer to God or farther from God? Is this action that I am going to do is going to be right or is going to be wrong? Is going to be good? Is going to be bad? Always question your actions. Just don't do things because you have been doing something for a long time or without thinking about it. Always be mindful. Mindful. Always really, really think about what you are doing and whether it is leading you to God or driving you away from God. Work. Number eight, work. Be very careful. Be very careful what kind of work do you do. Sometimes you cannot choose your work. We have had discussions in our side group in Jacksonville, Florida, because a couple of its members, they are owners of junk food type of stores where they sell meat. 
And we all know that selling, buying, eating meat is not a good thing to do. So they are selling sandwiches there that has meat. But you know, they have no choice. This is the way they earn their living. And if they feel they cannot change that, then as long as they do that with a prayer in their mind, and they do that. When they're preparing that sandwich that has bacon or ham or something or sausage, they're putting the meat there, but they are praying. They're doing the uh, Gayati Mantra or something. They're praying. So that impure thing they know they're putting there is going to be purified by God. You know that the Gayatri Mantra, when it is said before eating, it purifies whatever you are going to eat. So they feel that they have to do that at least for some time because they have no other means of survival. This is the way how they get an income. But if you have a choice, if you have a choice of doing work that is not contrary to Swami's teachings, go for that. Go for that. Number nine, family life. That's very simple. To be a spiritual, you have to be the best father. You have to be the best mother. You have to be the best spouse. You have to be the best example in your family. As you well know, people don't do what you say. People do what you do. If you are doing wrong things, this is what they are very likely going to do too. Especially children. And I don't know if you have heard the saying, your actions speak so loud that I cannot hear what you are saying. Isn't it? Your actions speak so loud that I cannot hear what you are saying. Because people pay more attention to what you do than what you say. Number 10, parenting. And I will just mention one thing. That it might not be a problem in a side group, but it is a big problem in other groups. It is parenting. Parenting. Being a good parent. And the only thing that I'm going to mention about that is spend more time with your children. I know. I am totally convinced that few of you are not spending too much time with your children. I know that. That happens in every group. How much time or how much is enough? Too much time? I don't know. It all depends. It changes. It varies. But go to your conscious and think, could I spend more time with my children? Be with them more time? Spend more time with them? I don't know. You will have to decide. But if you think you can spend more time with your And I know. I know. We all have millions of excuses. Oh, it's my work. I need to do work. I need to provide for them. I need to generate money so I can provide for them so they can have a happy life. Or whatever. Don't let excuses take you away from the time your children need with you. They need your time. They need you. Baba gave you those children. You are borrowing those children for some time from Baba. Baba is the owner. You are just borrowing the children for some time until they grow as an adult. And they, Baba gave them to you with a responsibility of, of raising them in the way, best way possible. Some people will do good jobs. Some people will not do such a good job. But do the best you can. But to do any job, you have to be with them. If you don't spend time with them, how can you ever do a good job? Number 11. Solitude. We need to have moments of solitude. Moments of being alone. You remember what 
Dr. Sunam said yesterday, what Baba told him, and he told us, and I learned that, and I said, I'm going to say that tomorrow. Baba told Dr. Sunam, when you are in solitude, when you are in silence, you are God. That is powerful. If you think about that, that is very powerful. Only when you are alone, in solitude, by yourself, quiet, only then you are God. And we all know that we are God. We just don't have the awareness of our divinity. We know intellectually, just here, in your minds, you know you are divine. You know you are God. But can you live and experience and be God in all the moments of your life? Of course not. But at least take a few minutes every day to be in solitude, to be quiet, to be with yourself. So at least in those few moments, you can be God. You can get in touch with the God that resides inside of you. Let's say, and I hope you will, let's say that you decide right now at this moment, yes, I'm going to block out time every day, 5, 10, 15 minutes, whatever you want, to be quiet in solitude. Then what do we do? What do I do? What can you do? Many things can be done. Nothing can be done, and both are okay. Let me tell you that nothing can be done, and it's okay. You know? There is some kind of meditation that is practiced, especially in the Buddhist communities, which is wonderful, where people meditate doing no meditation. I meditate doing no meditation, yeah. You know what the meditation consists of? Just stay quiet. Let your mind quiet. Be aware of your mind. If thoughts are coming, just let them go by. Don't get upset about this or that or the other. Just let those thoughts come by. Don't try to do any meditation that you know. Just be quiet. In self-awareness, just quiet. Do no meditation. That is okay. Just staying quiet in solitude, just being aware of what is going on. Being aware of your mind. What is your mind doing? What is my mind doing? Just being aware. Don't try to push your mind this way or that way. Don't try to meditate this way or that way. That's okay. I never tried that before until I learned about it. And you know something? You can do that anywhere, anytime for a few minutes. And you know, it's so good just to be quiet, trying to do nothing, just being aware of your mind, of your thoughts. And that's it. Anybody can do that. Now, let's talk about doing meditation. What do you need to do meditation? There are tons of meditations. Many kinds of meditation. But let me mention one thing. Before you can do meditation, you have to do concentration. Because if your mind is going all over the place, if your mind is so restless, it's very difficult to do any meditation. So the first thing that we need to do, and Swami talks about that, is to learn how to quiet, to calm our mind by using concentration. And then from then, we can do meditation. I could go into hours of talking about meditation. I have been a meditator for many years. And I have tried different ways of meditating. You don't need to know all of that. I don't need to talk to you about all of that. But I want to tell you about one meditation that Swami says is the best one that we can do in this Kali Yuga. 
Yoti meditation. Meditation in the light. Yoti. Yoti meditation. If nothing else, you don't need to go to any complicated system of meditation. If nothing else, learn about Yoti meditation. It's all over the place. Meditation in the light. Just do that. Do that one. You can do it in 10 to 12 minutes. You can do it. But do it every day. Stay quiet every day doing Yoti meditation. I won't talk about other types of meditation that are very good too, but it will take too long. Now, you remember yesterday I told you that when you are upset about something and you are upset about Swami, I told you, talk to them. Talk to him. Talk to Swami. Tell Swami all of your frustrations that you have about whatever is going on in your life. I said that. And then my wise wife, when we got out of the room, told me, yeah, that was very good. But you know what? You forgot the most important thing. And what was that, honey? Well, you needed to tell them, and I'm going to tell you today, because I think it's important. She was right. When we sit to talk to Swami and ask Swami for answers about any problem, Swami has said, and this is what I forgot, he said, and don't get up until your, your questions are answered. If you need to stay there for three hours, stay for three hours, or three days, or three years. Well, nobody will stay for three years, of course, or three days. But don't get up until your questions are answered. Very important. Number 12. The 12th thing that we need to do. Music. Cultivate music. Sing bhajans. If you are talented like Dr. Sunam, compose bhajans. If you are not good at singing bhajans, if you can't compose any bhajans, at least listen to bhajans. Because music is a sound arranged in different ways. And sound is the most powerful energy in the universe. You remember the whole universe was created out of Om, a sound. God sounded Om, and the whole universe came into manifestation. So sounds, music, bhajans are very, very powerful. Do that every day if you can. You want to be a spiritual person? Do bhajans. Listen to them. Sing them better. Number 13, I already touched a little bit on that. Read books. Read spiritual books. You need to read. I mean, some people like reading or the people don't like much reading, but it's a good thing to read spiritual books. Number 14, and this is very, very important, very important. I will spend a few minutes in this one. You want to be spiritual? Practice gratitude. 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 Most of us, we are so ungrateful about the good things that life is bringing to us, about the good things that are out there. Gratitude is a very, very forgotten topic. I know because Srikanth told me, and he said that yesterday, I think, or, or somebody said that, that gratitude has been one of the topics that they have been in this group, that you have been studying and talking about throughout the year. Isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm right. Gra gratitude for? For the children. Oh, that was for the children. Children, gratitude for the parents and nature and all of that. Well, let's imagine we are all children. We are all children. 
In a way, we are all children. We need to be child, child, like a child. So we need to practice gratitude. I'm going to give you an exercise that I want you to do every night. It's very simple, it's very short, it's very powerful about gratitude. You can do this. Anybody can do this. This is what I want you to do. When you go to bed at night, and please do it. If you just hear me, you say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's a very interesting exercise. And don't do it. It's interesting, it's nice, but it's worthless when you don't do it. So you need to do it. Go to bed, or even before going to bed, when you are ready to go to bed, write in a piece of paper. You can have a special notebook maybe for that, or you can have your computer or iPad or something where you can write things on. Write three things, at least three. If you can write five or 10 or 20 or one million things, that's even better. Not one million, of course, but at least three things. Three th good things that happened that day in your life that you are grateful for, that you are happy that happened to you. If you are a negativistic person, the first few days you will never find anything good happen to you and you will never be grateful about anything because your attitude is not positive, it's negative. There are tons of things happening all the time to all of us that we can be grateful about. And I am not talking about big things. Oh, I won the lottery. I'm so grateful. I'm rich now. Or this. Or no, 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 no. Forget about those things. It's small little things. I am so grateful that I am alive. Do you want anything better than that? You are alive. Someone said yesterday, and I was laughing a lot, and I just thought about that. There is a gentleman in this room that whenever someone asks him, what do you do for a living? He says, I breathe. <laughs> Be grateful that you can breathe, that you are alive. Be grateful that you, whatever, whatever. Be grateful about nature. Be grateful about anything. I'm telling you, the more you think about it, the more things you will find every day. And then you go day by day for one week. Do it for one week, every night. And then after one week, then you review it. You read all the things that you have been grateful for or that you should be grateful for in the past week. Do that. That is a very simple exercise and very powerful. We had, what, five minutes? Yeah, okay. So, I'm just going to end with this. Can I be more spiritual by going to a Sai Center? Can I be more spiritual by going to a Sai Group? Ooh, that's a heavy one. There are so many people there who are always doing things which are discouraging me to be more spiritual. I really don't learn much there. And these people are always gossiping about something or... I don't know. I don't know if, if I want to go to this group or that group. I don't know. A lot of things are going on. I can do better by myself. I can do better at home. I don't need a side group. I don't need a group. Sometimes people think like that. Let me tell you two things, and then we will pretty much finish. Two things. Two things that we don't want to do in any side group. Actually, in any group, but especially in side groups, so people don't get discouraged. First one. Don't judge other Psy members. If you start judging them, they are these and they are that and they are the other. 
and you put them down in your mind because you are judging, that's a bad practice. Hey, you're not going to a side center to judge anybody. Who do you think you are? To judge? Only Baba judges everybody. You are not supposed to be judging anyone. You are going there for your own benefit. Someone is doing wrong things in a group, and there is always someone who might be doing something wrong. Ignore that. Don't judge. Don't be affected by it. Don't be put down by whatever else. Something else is going on. Don't judge. You know, only Baba knows the intentions of why people are doing what they are doing. You don't know. You don't know if they had a bad day that day. You don't know if they are sick and in pain and reacting to those negative things. And this is why they are how they are. You don't know. Only Baba knows. So don't judge anybody when you go to a side center. And number two, the second thing that you don't need, you don't want to do in a side group is don't compare yourself to others. People do that. I am better. I am a better singer. I should be singing all the time. I should be singing by dance in every session. Because I am a great singer. I am better than everybody else. My voice and my singing is way, way better than everybody else. So and so sings so bad as compared to me. Judging, comparing. I don't even know why this person is singing today. I'm not. Don't compare yourself. In any ways. Not just singing. In any ways. So not judging, not comparing. And the third thing that I wanted to mention before closing, when people say, oh, I can do better by myself. I don't need to go to any groups. In that group, there is always some kind of trouble that bothers me, and I go there, and when I come out, I feel bad. Why, why should I go there? Well, precisely because of what I said before. It is very easy to be a spiritual at home when nobody's challenging you. When you go to a group, then there will be difficult people there who are going to do or say things that will challenge you. And that is an opportunity to grow. If you leave and don't come back to that group, you will never learn. You will never grow. You need to learn and grow from challenges, from the difficult people, you know. Some of the most difficult people are living in Prasanti Nilayan. Some of the most difficult people are in Sai organization. I have been going to Prasanti for 20 years, three, four times a year. I have met a lot of people there. And it has been always in my mind why do Swami have these controversial, difficult people so close to him? I don't know. Only Swami knows. Only He knows why He does what He does. But one thing that I can tell you, everybody around those difficult people, either in your center or in India, they are op giving you opportunities to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember when someone was talking too much and somebody started clapping like, it's time to finish. <laughs> I, I know you didn't do that for that, but it's time to finish. Anyway, thank you so much. And Sairam.